the Patriots extra motivation for Psycho Tom to come out. And I think oh. they just did that for your Cowboys. I so all eyes right about that, will actually. be on that one. Patriots, mm -hmm. Cowboys and Dallas. And of course, we'll be watching Brady and Hardy very closely. Mm. Moving on to tonight's game, though. We've got Thursday night football, people. The second year of the Bill O'Brien era has not started as planned. The team is now one and three. And in the third quarter of last week's game against Atlanta, when the Texans were down 42 to nothing, they made a switch at quarterback on their way to a 48 to 21 loss. Stephen A, who's who's to blame here for the Texans' slow start? Bill O'Brien. That's who's to blame. I mean, that's an easy question. Um, watching Bill O'Brien on Hard Knocks, I have an affinity for individuals, particularly coaches, who are just straight shooters. They let you know exactly where they stand. Um, they pull no punches. They tell you what it's going to be like, why it's going to be that way, and it is clear and established that they're the boss. There's no confusion. They are where the buck stops. And when it comes to Bill O'Brien, look, I respect the man. I respect the job that he did at Penn State, although some would say that most of the players under Joe, under the late Joe Paterno did not leave, so he didn't inherit a bad program. He took over Houston, and they clearly improved from the 2-14 and 14 season that they had uh, under Gary Kubiak and his success of that last year. Kubiak was there when they lost 14 straight games. Uh, all of those things are true. He did improve, but let's call it what it is. Um, Bill O'Brien had an opportunity to draft a Teddy Bridgewater. He had an opportunity to draft a Derek Carr. To a lesser degree, Johnny Manziel, who was drafted before both of those guys, but whose success hasn't been the same as those other two as of yet. He passed on that. He passed on that for Jadavion Clowney, who to me has been a virtual no-show his, his, throughout his NFL career thus far. If things don't change for, the, for Jadavion Clowney, he may very well go down as one of the biggest busts as a number one overall pick in NFL history. I mean, we got to keep an eye on that. Yeah. I'm talking about along the lines of Jamarcus Russell, for crying out loud, because we are getting absolutely positively nothing but he was from Jadavion Clowney. Stephen yeah. A., to be fair. He was injured. You know, he was injured, whereas Jadavion, uh, whereas Marcus Russell uh, was just fat. Yeah. Mm. Where, uh, J you know, Jadavion Clowney, uh, he was injured. Mm -hmm. But the point that I'm trying to make is that, well, you know what? There were some questions about him coming out of South Carolina. Not just about his zest to play the game, but about whether or not, you know, the injuries were something that he was worried about and stuff like that. Well, if you have those questions, his talent jumped off the screen. There was no doubt about that. But the flip side to it is that on the NFL level, when somebody is questioning your zest to play the game of football, you've got a problem. Well, Bill O'Brien and those boys, Rick Smith and those boys elected to go in that direction. Fair enough, because his talent spoke to that. But the quarterback position is the most important position on a football field. And evidently, it did not appear to be that way with a Bill O'Brien and Rick Smith. So when I look at it from that perspective and I see the trouble that they're having, it's raising red flags. Because even though their defense can be considerably better, the fact of the matter is their offense has been the problem. Their offense was the problem when Matt Shaw was there. Even when he was throwing 400,000 plus, 400,000 yards plus, when he got to the postseason, he looked like a deer in headlights. And then now, since he's been gone, you can't find anybody that can look halfway decent in the regular season. I mean, you, you got people that want to cr crown Ryan Fitzpatrick as the second coming because of how, how respectable he made them look last year. So clearly your quarterback position is a problem. And I just look at it from the perspective that if you're Bill O'Brien, a lot of fire and brimstone, I certainly don't question his football acumen, but right now he's falling along the lines of all the other coaches that came from Bill Belichick, the Romeo Cornells, uh, the Charlie Weisses. I love both of them, but their careers have not been that successful as head coaches. And now you've got him and, of course, Josh McDaniel. I mean, New England coaches that became head coaches don't have the greatest record. Eric Mangini did relatively decent in New York, but he didn't last long. And now we see the problems they're having defensively in San Francisco. And we know how much we both respect Eric Mangini. I'm just saying that when you look at coaches mm -hmm. that you know came out of Bill Belichick's system and ultimately landed themselves head coaching jobs, they don't, none of them seem to be on the level of Bill Belichick. None of them. And Bill O'Brien's the latest. I wish, I, I hope he turns it around, because I like him. But 
It's not that impressive thus far. <sighs> I'm with you. I also like Bill O'Brien. But before I get to him and expand on your points, I got to make a quick one about J.J. Watt. I believe the week you took off right before football started, this broke. The story broke that NFL.com had ranked the top 100 players in today's pro football. Right. And J.J. Watt mm -hmm. was ranked number one, the most valuable player in all of pro football, regardless of position, quarterback, running right. backs, receivers, J.J. Watt. And That's my ridiculous. response that day was, J.J. Watt? J.J. Watt? Seriously. So now, I, I ask again the same question I asked back in August. How can a defense that was behind 42 to nothing at Atlanta last Sunday feature the best player in pro football? How can J.J. Watt now be part of a team that over the last two years and now these four games of this year is 12 and 24. Is that the MVP of the league? What is he doing to lift that team above 12 and 24? I don't know. I, I admire him greatly at his position. You know, as an inside pass rusher, you'd have to say he's the best, but the most valuable player in pro football, I, I don't think he'd be in my top 10. He's in, uh, uh, seems like at least 10 national TV commercials, God bless him, but it <laughs> seems like he's being overrated as that guy uh -huh. who can do that for that team. Now back to the preseason in which yep. week after week I watched Hard Knocks featuring J.J. Watt and Bill O'Brien. I enjoyed it. I did too, but I sat right here and I, I first did. guessed this. I'm, I'm not 2020 hindsight. I said, my goodness. Bill O'Brien is really getting full of himself. He is really enjoying his, his breakout star performance on Hard Knocks, maybe to a fault, because he seems more and more self-aware and camera conscious. And we know some people around television can get camera conscious, mm -hmm. where you see that red light and, and you gravitate to it. And it seemed like Bill O'Brien started acting like the guy everyone expected him to act like instead of just being Bill O'Brien. And clearly, the first episode featured him dropping all kinds of F-bombs. And he said, my mom called and she was so upset. And I apologized to my mom. And then it seemed like it was F-bombs away after that. Like he, <laughs> he thought it was funny that, that this was his calling card. His trademark was, listen to me curse on hard knocks to my football team. And he got a little carried away with it. Maybe his team got a little carried away with it. And I remember him battling back against the, the all, all the, the criticism and concern about you don't have a quarterback we do have a quarterback and by the way he is a quarterback coach and a coordinator he is the overseer of that offense but he was willing to go to NFL battle with either Hoyer or Mallet Mallet or Hoyer and he thought they would be just fine and obviously we're only four games in but they have not been just fine because he's been playing musical quarterbacks with those two and when you have two quarterbacks as the old saying goes, you have none. Yeah. I think they basically have none. They don't have a viable option, and so they're going to struggle all year because it's going to be Hoyer, then Mallet, then Mallet, then Hoyer. And they don't have sometimes. a running game. And they don't Arian have a running Foster, game. So that, that doesn't they, help. That, it is, yeah, that's a fair point. They haven't had Arian Foster. He yeah. tried to play, had one big faux mm -hmm. pas last week yep. that resulted in a touchdown. But still, Stephen A., in the end, J.J. Watt, to me, is being overrated as the most valuable player, and Bill O'Brien is being a little overrated off hard knocks, his, his instant stardom on hard knocks. And it boils down to this team is 1-3 and three and got blown off the field and humiliated at Atlanta. Well, I don't blame you for your comments about J.J. Watt. I think he's a superstar. I think he deserves all the respect and the acclaim that he has received. Uh, he's leading the team with sacks it with four right now. He's got about he's second on the team in tackles with about 18. We know he gets double teamed. He gets triple teamed. He's absolutely ferocious. He's big time. He's legit. But by mere virtue of the position he plays, it's impossible for him to be the best of anybody in the NFL, the most valuable, because he simply can't have that kind of impact. He can't have the kind of impact that a Lawrence Taylor once had. He can't have the kind of impact that people like that have had in the past, okay? And when you look at today's game, there's just no question that when you talk about most valuable player 
in most instances, it has to be your quarterback yeah. because so much of the onus is on their shoulders in terms of the team's success or failure. That's the, that's the point that I want to make about that. When we talk about Bill O'Brien, I'm not going to get on the man for cussing Skip because I don't think he's trying to play to the cameras. I think that's the way he talks. I think it comes absolutely natural to him. You know, I, I, listen, everybody, anybody, that, any man that's decent, obviously, changes when he's around his mama. So you don't talk a certain way when you're around your mama. So, yeah. I, I, I listen, listen. We all know. Listen, I ain't apologizing. We all know that I've, I that I cuss. I am 47 years old. My mother heard me cuss one time in my life, and the only time that transpired was when she was behind me and I didn't know. Uh -huh. That is the only time mm. that my mother has ever heard me say a curse word in my 47 years on this earth. I do not speak out of turn. I don't even raise my voice around my mama. It's just automatic. And, and what did okay. your mama say when she heard that word slip out of your mouth? Well, you mean after she knocked me upside my head? <laughs> That's what I was waiting you mean, for. You mean, you mean, you mean it was it, you asked about what she did before or after? You know, after she lectured me and, you know, Stephen, I, I, I did not raise you that way. Watch your mouth. But that was after I got slapped upside my head. So that was again. That was, and actually, guess what? That was two years ago. That was oh, two years ago. No. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like it was oh, a no, decade ago. It was like, 14 years. <laughs> yeah. No, it was two years. Oh, okay. It was two years. She heard me cuss. Yes, I was 45 and I got slapped upside I my head. It. And you know what I did? I said, I'm sorry. Yeah, because she's mama. Mm -hmm. So, she's yeah, mama. but away from mama, you know, you, you, you're going to do certain things, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's just the way it goes. Now, when I think about Bill O'Brien, you know, he doesn't need, you know, I don't think he was playing for the cameras. I think that's just who he is, Skip. But I think the indictable offense against him is that he turns out to be like most other coaches. People are forgetting what makes Bill Belichick special. You point out Tom Brady. You know what I point to, Skip? His courage to pick Tom Brady, to bring Tom Brady in there. And when Drew Bledsoe came back and was ready to go, he said, no, we're going to stay with Tom Brady. You got to remember, Tom Brady wasn't Tom Brady at that time. Mm -hmm. And even the games that he put forth, they weren't spectacular. But Bill Belichick saw something and didn't care about the money Drew, Ble Drew Bledsoe rather, was mm -hmm. getting paid and said, this is who we're going to go with, even though Tom Brady was stellar. And a lot of people felt that Bill, that Bill Belichick should have made that move. Unfortunately, what we see from Bill O'Brien as and as other coaches, they tend to lean towards what they're familiar and comfortable with, understanding that that very thing goes against everything the NFL is supposed to be about. You ain't supposed to be comfortable. You ain't supposed to be secure. It's supposed to be up in the air. You're supposed to wonder because the game demands that. And the fact that we've got both Hoyer and Mallet on the squad, two former New England Patriots, you know, he's comfortable with them. I believe it's costing him because he picked dudes he was familiar with as opposed to going out there and taking a chance on somebody whose potential could potentially be greater, but is also unknown. Last quick point. If Bill O'Brien, who once coached Tom Brady, had Tom Brady right now, they just well could be 4-0. I agree with that. <laughs> if, any, if anyone had I Tom Brady. Good news for Bill O'Brien and the Texans may be here. According to our Adam Schefter, Matthew Hasselbeck is expected to start in place of Andrew Luck oh. tonight in Houston. This just mm. in. Up next.